Hi, welcome to this lecture on what is on a CTO's radar. We thought we'd put together some points and some examples of things that could potentially come up if you're a CTO or if you are looking to become a CTO and want to understand a little bit more. My name is Jason Noble and I've been a CTO of many businesses here in the UK. So the first thing that should be on a CTO's radar is security and particularly a breach whether it's internal or external. So as a CTO, you need to make sure that you have the processes in place to be able to deal with a breach. It's virtually impossible to stop a breach because of the movement of technology and also the fact that a lot of breaches are done through social engineering. So you need to educate your uh, staff and your users on how best to protect themselves. But if something does come up, do you have the processes in place to be able to deal with it quickly? So a case that happened to me was when uh, a developer accidentally leaked an API key that gave uh, extra access to systems that, they sh that users shouldn't have been able to. We picked it up very quickly, we shut everything down, we changed all the API keys, and we confirmed that nobody had actually used that API key whilst it was in the wild for 15 minutes. And we didn't panic because we had the processes in place. I've also had something else whereby in the early days of ASP.NET, we had users logging into a web-based system and one user rang up saying that they could see data that they didn't think was theirs, that it was another data. Um, we investigated it very quickly. Within five minutes of the telephone call, we took the system offline because we, we believed that there was a bug in the system. It turned out that uh, the checking mechanism for uh, logging users at that time in ASP wasn't thread safe. So if two users logged in at exactly the same time, one of them would have the wrong credentials. We fixed it and we got it back up live within a couple of hours. But at no point did we panic. And that's the one lesson you need to learn here as a CTO is not panicking, but to control the situation. So other areas that you may come up in the radar are things like data theft. Now, data theft can be malicious, somebody hacking in as we talked about in a security breach, but it could be something as innocent as an API that you've provided to users and somebody's worked out how to get more information than they should do. So having the tracking mechanisms and automatic stops in place will prevent that. Another area which isn't really uh, looked at too often is data loss. And what I mean by data loss is, is the backup of systems. Are you regularly backing up your systems? Are you checking that the backups work? So as a tech leader in your business, you need to make sure that you stay up to date with the latest technology. What you don't want to be doing is sticking within your own team and not looking outwards. Is there technology out there that could make your systems faster to deliver or will make lives easier for your developers or your customers or your business? And how quickly can you integrate that into your business? So you need to set aside some time to understand the latest trends in technology and be able to dig down and understand them so that you can make a decision on whether to incorporate them. That leads on to whether you're using the right technology. You need to make sure that whatever it is that is required for the business, that you're using the right frameworks and the right uh, backend servers to support that. So as a database grows, you may find that relational databases is in the right architecture to use, and you may want to move up from that to a data warehouse or maybe an OLAP cube to um, Elasticsearch. These are many options that you might have to have. You may not be an expert in them, but you need to understand what benefits they provide. Another common area which gets blamed on technology is missed deadlines. Now, missed deadlines can be because the specifications were incomplete and you started a build before you really understood as a business what it is what you wanted to build. It also may be down to the fact that you need other people to be part of the development process and their availability isn't quite as easy as it is for your own team. But you need to communicate very clearly the deadlines that you can believe that you can achieve so that the rest of the business can make decisions on that, especially if you have third party suppliers. That may be suppliers who are reliant on your software, or it may be suppliers who give you software. 
And for those suppliers that give you software or software that you use, you need to understand their roadmap and their development processes and their reliability. Um, I've had dealings with uh, data suppliers where the quality of the data was subjective at best. But what was worse was their delivery was very intermittent, made it very difficult for us as a business to build and grow with it. Another area that can lead to conflict is the promises that salesmen make to prospects and customers. They want to close the deal, so they will say that certain functionality is going to be available immediately. What you need to do is have regular conversations with the sales team to make sure if they are doing that, that you can meet those deadlines. What you don't want to be is the naysayer uh, and the person that always says no can't be done. What you need to be is flexible and build that in. Because ultimately the business needs customers, it needs to bring them on board. But where you've got functionality that salesmen have promised, and it may be a little bit beyond you, you do need to make sure they don't go too far. A very common problem in both small businesses and larger teams I've seen is the reliance on one or two individuals that have the whole knowledge of the software that's being built. These uh, individuals are quite vocal, but you can't get rid of them because they have the knowledge. So you need to counteract that. So the best way to do that is to double up. If you're starting a team, try and double up. So you have, you know, if it's a small team, two back-end developers, two front-end developers, make sure that the knowledge is shared and make sure that nobody becomes too vocal. So if you're running uh, stand-up meetings in your agile processes, make sure that everybody has an equal voice. And if somebody is too vocal, then have a quiet word with them. Make sure that they understand that you have to listen to other people. And ultimately, if that doesn't work, then you will need to look at rejigging the team. It is common for new projects to get a minimal viable project, get it out the door, lean methodology, give it to the customers and build up from there. There are some areas that where this can cause a bit of a headache, especially if the product takes off and is quite popular, and that's on performance and load. We talk about performance and load testing in another lecture, but here it's more about the architectural decisions. Uh, you need to understand from an early uh, stage, what is the likely throughput of data and users within your systems? And if you take the simple system, so an example, you take a relational database to store your information to begin with, have you got a path in where you can grow that maybe to a bigger database or a non a NoSQL database, which will fit in? Um, there's no fault for going that. You don't need to get the biggest and the greatest from day one. As long as you've got a migration path, then everything should be fine. An area which, again, you need to be wary of particularly if you have consumer-based apps, is operating systems, particularly the closed operating systems produced by Microsoft and Apple, whereby they can bring in functionality or remove functionality at their whim. So you need to be able to get hold of the beta versions early on and get your QA team to test them. I consider iOS to be a particular one where you need to be careful on this, having had my fingers potentially almost burnt with the changes that they have brought or not brought into their systems. One area of, of fear for a CTO of a large organization is that they don't get access to the code. They almost certainly have a coding background, but they won't see the individual code. So how do they know that the code quality is good? So this is where you need to make sure that the processes are in place, such as code quality metrics, testing coverage, and at least that will give an indication. But also, don't be afraid to go out and talk to developers. Talk to your heads of development. They will be able to give you an idea of how things are going. Also watch the metrics on continuous integration, how many releases are happening a day. All of that will give you an idea of the quality, as well as the morale and the turnover of the staff. So finally, it's dealing with the business. And it's dealing with unrealistic internal expectations. And this can come from secondhand conversations. And you need to make sure that you spend time with other areas of the business that you're talking to them and that they understand the, the pressures or maybe some of the problems that you have in developing a particular piece of software. Speak to the sales team, speak to the marketing team, your customer services, customer success teams, and particularly the CEO. Because if he understands or she understands the problems that you're facing, 
then they'll be able to mitigate and buy you the time that you need to create the new releases. Then it will be successful. But if there isn't that communication, then it can very quickly spiral. So that is your most important task, is to understand the perceptions of development from the rest of the business, and then you can drive it forward. So these are some of the things that can come up on a CTO's radar. This list isn't exhaustive, and it will be dependent on the nature of the software, the products that you're producing, the industry that you're working in, and the team size and the company size. But they apply whether it's a small business, medium business, or large business.